I'd like to welcome you to our Veterans Day ceremony. Veterans Day was formerly known as Armistice Day. In 1938, November 11th was officially dedicated to the cause of world peace and was intended to celebrate and honor World War I veterans. In 1954, Congress changed the wording of the original legislation from Armistice to Veterans. With the approval of the new legislation, November 11th became a day to honor Americans, American veterans of all wars. This year, our students have been involved in a number of activities to help honor U.S. veterans and service members. In addition to planning the ceremony, they are collecting candy, making blankets and paracord bracelets, creating care packages, and designing bulletin boards. Thank you so much for joining us this year. Alyssa Swan, Delaney Haynes, and Isabel Flitton will present the colors. Please rise. Lauren Neelan, SGA President, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. The Stevensville Middle School Choir, under the direction of Ms. Renee, will perform America the Beautiful. Welcome Shelby Ferry and Ariana Barrett to the podium. In Flanders Fields is one of the most memorable war poems ever written. The author, Lieutenant Colonel John McCray, was a surgeon in Flanders during World War I. Although he had been a doctor for years, he found it impossible to get used to the suffering and blood there. One death particularly affected McCray. A young friend and former student of his was killed in a shell burst on May 2nd, 1915. And McCray performed the funeral ceremony in absence of the chaplain. The next day, McCray vented his anguish by composing a poem. 
In the nearby cemetery, he would see the wild poppies in the ditches and spend 20 minutes of his precious resting time scribbling in the lines in a notebook. The poem was very nearly not published, dissatisfied with it. McCray tossed it away, but a fellow officer retrieved it and sent it to the newspapers in England. It was published on December 8, 1915. In Flanders Fields by Lieutenant Colonel John, Mc John McCray of the Canadian Army. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row and row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks so bravely singing fly. Scares heard amid the guns below, we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours, and hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Brianna Kurtz and Justine Sloda will perform taps. The song will be played through twice, so please hold your applause until the second playing is finished. We are happy to have a veteran of the U.S. Navy as our keynote speaker today. Please join me in welcoming Petty Officer Second Class Chris Small. My Marine Corps brothers. Oh, and Pirates, thank you uh, for inviting us here this morning. I received a phone call at 8 o'clock last night asking if I could uh, say something on behalf of the keynote speaker who couldn't make it today. Uh, so please bear with me. It's a very important weekend for veterans, uh, not just of past, but of current, and those of us who are still serving. But I'm gonna start before November 11th, because there's another day that needs to be remembered. November 10th, 1775, the Continental Congress enacted the U.S. Marines. So I can, if I can have any members of the U.S. Marines, please stand up. Can we wish them a happy birthday? Happy November 11th, 1918 uh, was an important day for America and the world. That was the day that officially ended World War I. 1919 was the day it became a holiday where we we're going to remember the veterans of World War I. And we've continued that tradition every year, even to this day. We all took an oath when we enlisted, either as an enlisted member, non officer, officer to uphold and protect the Constitution of both enemies, foreign and domestic. But our service does not end when our uniforms are put away or hung up for the last time. We serve every day after that. Queen Anne's County has a rich 
population of veterans and service members of queen s county is relatively small county maryland but twenty percent of our residents have served or are still serving you will walk past them through grocery stores through kmart or anywhere else on the island you may not know it to this day we still serve the community we give back to the community we help support the community veterans is not always about fighting wars that's the last thing we want to do is fight in a war our goal is to provide peace that's what a true military is for is to create peace and keep that peace going for other generations to prosper we do more humanitarian efforts than any other country in the world the united states to this day hundred percent of our military is strictly volunteer we don't have drafts anymore other countries their citizens have to join by law all of our service members took it upon themselves to put their country before themselves to serve so every November 11th take a couple minutes if you see a veteran thank them for their service they didn't do it for themselves they did it for our country and our communities and they continue to do it today I started serving in 1988 still towards the end of the Cold War uh, we were playing games with Russia went into Panama Desert Storm and now it's called the war on terrorism but I didn't join for war I joined to serve our country war is the furthest thing from my mind my mind was to help protect our freedoms the freedoms that we have every day speak our mind regardless of who we are <clears throat> veterans are the ones that have preserved our rights to do that today we have numerous wars represented and if I can have just stand up uh, members of the Vietnam War era welcome home Does a storm war on terrorism Grenada, Panama. I'm a proud member of this community. My daughter is in third grade over at Bayside Elementary. Eventually she'll be walking these halls and maybe that day I'll be able to come and speak for her eighth grade class as well. Again, I want to thank you for honoring us, but it is our honor to serve our communities. Thank you. I'm sorry, Korean War. Thank you, Mr. Mall. Very well spoken. Stevensville Middle School 7th and 8th grade band, led by Mr. Zadalis, will now perform. Please rise for the national anthem.
Ms. Berberich will now present our closing remarks. To all the veterans who have given years of their life in the service of our country, we thank you. The brave men and women in our armed services put themselves on the front line so that we may to continue enjoy the freedoms ensured by the Constitution. We have not lost sight of your immeasurable sacrifice. We hope that today and all days, the positive impact of your time and dedication is not lost on you or the people of our country that you served. Students of Stevensville Middle School, the hard work you have put into our program today is reflective of your character and sustained effort towards one common goal. As you go forth from this ceremony and into your remaining time as students, you may recognize your responsibility as growing citizens in our democracy. Whether you choose to serve in the military or not, our collective security and progress as a nation relies on our armed services. As you, as you navigate the years to come, continue to honor those who allow you to pursue any dreams you may chase. We thank you for coming today to our Stevensville Middle School Veterans Day ceremony. As our band plays us out with their final selections, Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn, know it has been our honor and pleasure having you here today. Students, you will be exiting the opposite order with which you came. The last people in will be the first people.